My name is Paul Nesky. I was your moderator last year, and I'm going to start this year's meeting uh, for you. And, and if you heard me correctly, I said I was going to start this meeting for you. I want to make that very clear that these meetings aren't designed just for the select board to draw up some something to vote on. It's, it's for you folks to attend, and, and it belongs to you. So anybody that needs assistance in speaking, uh, let me know. Otherwise, I anticipate that you'll come to the microphones and speak diligently. You, you don't have to speak that close to it, but, but if, if <clears throat> and uh, I want you to make sure that when you do speak, you state your name, and uh, before uh, any, uh, so that we can get your name into the minutes properly. Make sure that when you've checked in that you did receive the little small stamp on your back of your hand because in case of a ballot vote, that's what we're gonna be using for identification that you're clear to, to cast your ballot. And if you have any questions or comments, um, many times you can find the answers to some of your questions right here in the town report. And if you turn to page 18, you might find a budget summary there that will answer some of your questions real quick. One of the things I want to also make clear today is that my eyes fail me a little bit as I've gotten older, my hearing's a bit impaired, and my memory is terrible. Now, I don't regret growing older because many are denied the privilege. That's an old Irish saying, and it holds true today right here. We're going to begin our meeting today with the Pledge of Allegiance. If you all stand. I pledge Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands one nation, under God, individual, with liberty and justice for all. And I'll turn it over now to uh, the select board chair. Good morning, everybody. Um, one of the, they tell us we don't have to, oh, I, I, oh, yeah. I can hear the feedback, right? <laughs> no, we don't have to move it. Um, we need to elect a town moderator. So I'm open for a motion. Any other nominations? Terrific. I move that the nominations be closed and that we're instructed to cast one ballot for town moderator, Mr. Nesky. Thank you. Thank you so much. That was Thank you for my coalition. So I'm going to start by telling you that uh, what you already have read, but we're going to read it anyway. The warning for the annual town meeting for the town of High Park states that the legal voters of the town of High Park are hereby warned and notified to meet at Lamoille Union High School at 736 Vermont Route 15 West in said town on Tuesday, March 5th in the year 2024 at 9 a.m. to transact business on the following articles not involving voting by Australian ballot, being Articles 2 through 6, which shall be voted from this floor. The voters are further warned and notified to meet at the High Park Municipal Building, lower level, at 344 Vermont Route 15 in said town on Tuesday, March 5th in the year 2024 at 7 o'clock in the forenoon, 7 a.m., at which time the polls will be open until 7 o'clock in the afternoon at 7 p.m., and at which time the polls will close to vote Article 1 by the Australian ballot. Th that article includes to elect a town school district officers as required by Australian ballot, select board member for the term of two years, a select board member for a term of three years, lister for the term of three years, a lister for the term of three years with one year's remaining, a lister for a term of three years with two years remaining and the Lamoille North Modified Union School District Director for a term of three years, and the Lamoille Regional Solid Waste Management District Director for a term of two years with one year remaining. So now we'll begin our, 
our meeting here today with Article 2. We're going to elect the town officers. You've elected a mo moderator for a term of one year, and now there's a, a cemetery commissioner whose term is up for a term of five years. What's your pleasure? Do I hear a motion? A nomination? <clears throat> Not hearing one, I would recommend for the time being to pass over that position. That's okay with everybody. We'll pass over. We'll come back to it. Lampfear Memorial Library trustee for a term of five years. I nominate Jim Noyes. Jim is the Thank you. So we have Jim Noyce, his name has been placed in nomination. Any other nominees? I move that the nomination cease and the third class cast one ballot for Jim Noyce to the library trustee. Motion's made. The motion's that uh, motion cease for that uh, office in the uh, Clerk cast one ballot for Jim Noyce. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? You've elected Jim Noyce. <laughs> Lanfair Memorial Library trustee for a term of five years. Another, another trustee is needed there. Do I hear any? I nominate Elliot Filter. Elliot filled a vacant position on the library board several months ago. And Motion made and seconded for Elliot Fielder. Thank you. Any other nominees? Hearing none, I'd I'd ask that uh, nomination cease and clerk cast a ballot on behalf of Elliot. All those. Is there anybody going to make that motion? Thank you. All those in favor, aye. aye. Opposed? We're gonna go back to that uh, cemetery commissioner. Any more thoughts about that? Is there anybody here that's uh, interested in that position? Then we'll pass over it. All right, and then we'll turn now to Article 3. Shall the voters create a reserve fund for town highway road construction, such funds to be used for road resurfacing and roadbed improvements to be under the control of the select board with funding from a transfer of $100,000 from the general fund, unassigned fund balance, donations, fees, grants, interest earned on investments or gifts, and by appropriation approved by voters in future years. Do I hear a motion on that? Motion's made. Do I hear a second on that? I thought I did. Thank you. Well, I'll be happy to explain why we're doing that. Thank you. <laughs> um, this past year, as you know, if you look on page, uh, let me see, I think it's on page 17, you'll see we have a variety of reserve funds that were started a number of years ago. Um, and that's to, to obviously build up some cash reserves so that when major expenses come our way, uh, hopefully we can pay for it in cash. If not, at least we don't have to borrow as much money. This past summer, as we all may remember, was terrible weather and terrible rain. And the road crew that was usually doing lots of paving and a variety of other road work spent a good deal of their summer 
<laughs> calling in for help. Um, <laughs> um, dealing, dealing with all the flood conditions. So that, and a lot of paving that was supposed to be done and was planned, and they were going to work, they were gonna do last summer, they couldn't get done. So when we got to the end of the budget year, in a very unusual circumstance, there was money left over in their budget. <clears throat> and generally what happens with that is it all rolls in and we have, we have your, your money that's left at the end of the year. And that's what we divide up and, and put into these reserves. Um, we realized we didn't have a reserve and, and we already, with the same amount of money, can do less and less road work and less and less paving because of the costs going up. So we didn't want to lose that <coughs> money for road work and for paving. So we decided in talking with, with our financial folks that the best thing to do was to create an additional reserve fund. So any year now that we get to the end of the year and there's money left over in the road work section of the budget, we can put it into that reserve and we can save it for future projects. We can also use it, you can put other funds in there as they may happen to come in, whether it's FEMA money or other state dollars or grants or <clears throat> somebody want, dies and leaves town a million dollars for paving. You never know what's gonna happen. So that's why we thought it would be a good idea to create this, uh, they we're calling it the, the uh, town highway road construction because there's always a need for more money in that fund. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Anybody have any questions about that? Yes? I have them come down front. I'll have to come down here, sir. Oh, it's, well, we don't have, we're just creating it. Okay, so it's not actually in the budget. Correct. Thank you. Any other questions? Jack? Uh, uh, Jack Anderson. Um, a few years ago, the village had some funding to put some sidewalks in. They were not able to complete the whole thing. And we turned that money over to the town for the select board. And I have not seen or heard rumors about what the select board was going to do with those funding on the intersection of Johnson Street Extension and West Main and Main Street. I have heard rumors only. There's no action. What's going on? The uh, as you know that um, the uh, that entire project turned in has turned into a gigantic project, <clears throat> and we felt there was no point in spending money on the sidewalk that ultimately was going to be torn up to do the, the, the work that needed to be done. And you're right, Jack, if you look on page 17, if you see the total um, uh, sidewalk, whoops, sorry, yeah, the sidewalk bike project path, all the money that's been rolled in there is still there. So when all the engineering and that all gets done, then the sidewalks will be put in. Yeah, go ahead. You good? Well, you know, it comes down to the engineering firms and the construction firms having the time, being able to go out to bid, um, getting all the clearances from the people that own property along there to, uh, to give the approval that we can go ahead with the, with the project. And those things just take time. And as uh, anyone who's done any kind of construction knows, it isn't just with housing and building, but with roads and all kinds of engineering. Uh, there are a lot of backed up projects and it can take a long time for, for companies to bid on projects and to get them done. So we agree it's taking a long time, but we're do, it's plugging along. There being no other questions I can see, I'm gonna call a question. All those in favor of the motion to Transfer $100,000 from the general fund, to find general fund unassigned fund balance 
including donations, fees, grants, interest earned on investments or gifts by any appropriation approved by voters in future years, please signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? You've adopted Article 3. We'll now turn to Article 4. And shall the voters approve a total general fund expenditures amount for the period July 1, 24 to June 30 in the year 25 of $3,336,900, of which $2,805,100 shall be raised by property taxes and $531,800 by non-property tax revenue. Sit here, gotta go over there. <coughs> <laughs> Do you need to stretch your knee? Yeah. Oh, yes. You're I'm, 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 I'm gonna get, yes, I'm going to get up and stand up and stretch my knee. And boy, those are low chairs. I just need a motion. Uh, motion first? No. Hmm? Are you a, a motion for, all right. I need a motion to talk about the budget. For I have a motion to accept second. and second it. Okay. Now we're open for discussion, right? Yes. Good thing we got Kim here to keep us in line. <laughs> <clears throat> um, Let me ask you. I know we're talking about the budget, but can I do a little sidetrack first with just introducing the staff and everybody? Oh, sure. Sure. Okay. Kim says it's legal for me to do this, so anything you want to know how things work, you definitely check with Kim. Um, a, welcome to town meeting. You'll all know that voting is back in the town office this year, and that's because uh, we won't go through the stories of moving the heavy voting machine and getting it back there last time, but uh, it was definitely not a good thing to do. So, so we're keeping the, the voting back there. Um, I, I want to take a minute before we start, and I would like to uh, acknowledge and introduce the town staff, because uh, most of you don't come into contact with them very often, and, uh, and they're who make this town run. And they're really important people. <clears throat> so I started with, last but certainly not least, is Kim Moulton, our town clerk. Uh, Kim has been, I had to look and see how long, Kim's been town clerk for 16 years. Whew, 16 years, all right, Kim. And, uh, and you couldn't ask for things to be done better than, than Kim does them. And when it comes to elections and outreach to folks and getting things done, she's just, uh, she's super. Uh, the entire country could take a lesson from her. Next, we have the assistant. Krista is probably back up running the polls right now. Krista Jones, who is when you come in the office, she's who's sitting right there in front. Krista has been with us for three years. Uh, she is terrific. She does a little bit of everything, and if something needs to be done, she says, well, teach me how to do it, and I'll be glad to do it. Jennifer Trico, who is our financial person. We, several years ago, began on a path of looking at the future of not just Hyde Park, but towns and small towns in Vermont. And what could we do to change our structure so that we would be ready and Hyde Park would be ready and prepared to deal in, in, uh, in positive and proactive ways? Uh, government is becoming more and more complicated. More mandates are handed down from Washington to the states to the towns. We have we have serious conversations sometimes about I don't we're not sure how small towns are going to continue to exist. There are so many things that are that we need to come into compliance with, and figuring out how to get the grants and how to get the money and how to get the assistance is really. Uh, is, is are their full-time jobs now. So we decided one of the best things we could do is to find and get a good financial person that could really take care of the finances of the town. And uh, Jen, has, uh, she does a wonderful job. And she takes the money that we have because the, the state pays in um, the, the school taxes, you get it in, in, in uh, quarterly, and so you have a lot of money sitting around. Jen has done a wonderful, does a wonderful job with investing it, so it actually earns some money for us. And uh, $5,000 earned here or there is a lot of money, and we thank you very much, Jen, for all that work. We have a, uh, we now have a zoning administrator, Steve McDonald, who works part-time as, again, as zoning and what the state requires for permits has become more and more complicated. What happened over the period, as we all know that, that uh, Ron Rajinsky has retired, and he was our town administrator for 12 years. 
And in that time period, the job of a town administrator changed tremendously. Uh, the demands for uh, just for everything. And uh, and again, that's part of what led us to the changes of, okay, we need a financial person to really take care of the finances of this town. And we need a zoning administrator that that's their priority. So when someone comes in and needs some help or needs to apply for permits, we've got somebody who that's their job to do it. It's not something that's way down the list that they'll get to when they get around to it. Uh, Steve's been with us for a year. He's part-time. Uh, he comes with a tremendous background in real estate, so he has a real understanding of this sort of thing. We have uh, Justin, I don't know if he's here, our board clerk and uh, now learning to be an assessor. Justin Mason is, um, is uh, delightful. He's working with several communities. Uh, I'll talk a little bit about more him later. And certainly last but not least, and our newest is uh, Brent Sheets, who is our new town administrator. Brent came all the way from Texas, and uh, when he first interviewed, my first question to him was, why would anybody move from Texas to northern Vermont in November? And he actually had a really good answer. His wife, who happens to be named Kim, was born and raised across the lake in New York, and she still has a lot of family there. And their kids are all grown in a way, so they decided that it was time to come up and be near family, so they wanted to move up into this region. And uh, we are very fortunate to have, uh, to have Brent as our new town administrator. Um, and the people that, that you probably need to appreciate the most, of course, is our town highway crew. Mark French, who is the foreman, Ryan Nolan, Michael Griggs, Jason Wells, and Jeffrey Baker. They're, they're the folks that take care of our roads all the time um, and just do a wonderful job. And one last thing. We have a retiring select board member, <laughs> and he thought he was going to get away without us saying anything. Uh, Roley has been, well, he's been in Hyde Park forever. Uh, he's been seven years on the select board. He uh, brings a great deal of knowledge. He always brings real concern for what the taxpayer can afford and they can't afford. And if you want to know anything about the history of Hyde Park, who used to live where, who lives where now, and uh, who's related to whom, just ask Roley. So I'd like a, a round of applause for Roley. <laughs> <clears throat> now, with my little sidetrack there, briefly about the budget. When, uh, <clears throat> when Ron and I first started work on the budget, and everybody sent in there, here's what we need, here's what we want, it came to an increase of a little over 10%. And we went, well, that doesn't work. Um, we have, uh, we worked and we worked, and uh, the select board worked, and, all the, and, the, and everybody in the office, and the road crew worked. And we've gotten it down to, and I, as, uh, is, say, if you look on page 8, 18, that sort of gives you the quick synopsis of what the changes in your budget are this year. We've gotten it down to so that uh, for every $100,000 of value in your house, um, it'll be a $47 increase. Your big increases are changes in the town office, which are about $71,000. That's the, the changes in the staffing, um, it's also, it's getting a new town administrator. Um, if you look at what the salaries have been all around us, we have been very fortunate to stay where we are. Healthcare went up 12% for about $25,000. Um, the highway pay and benefits were, uh, for crew, were about $70,000. The fire department, it says here it shows a $7,000 increase, but it's actually the fire department for the village water costs are now charged $2,000 a month or $24,000 a year. Um, that's a result of the village having to do their infrastructure restructuring and building and that cost that has been spread throughout the county and throughout the town to cover that cost. We are um, we're struggling with paying that amount of money. And we are actually be be interesting. Um, this is the kind of question on a select board that you get to deal with that seems as though it's easy, and then you get into it and it's not so easy. Uh, we could drill a well for about twelve thousand dollars, and not pay and totally disconnect from the village and not pay that twenty thousand dollars. 
if we don't pay that $20,000, but somebody still has to pay it. And so that would go back in the village. It would probably be spread over the entire county. We see it, we talked to the village, um, and they were very helpful in trying to say, could we get, could you give us, because they don't use that much water, it's a public service, could you, could you get us a lower rate? The way utilities are governed, they don't have that kind of option. They'd have to go back in and open up their entire rate case to be able to give the fire department a lower rate. Um, our, one of our thoughts is that by having it be on the Hyde Park town voters, that's $20,000 that's just on Hyde Park. If, if it goes back and it spreads throughout the country, it spreads, it's a little thinner. Um, we really haven't made a decision on what the right thing to do here because it's not, uh, none of them are easy decisions, but uh, I think maybe for all of you here and anybody that checks, those are the kinds of decisions that confront select boards these days. And uh, they, aren't, they aren't easy decisions. There isn't a clear win or a clear, this is an easy answer. Another of my little sidetracks. Um, I think what, what um, and if on page 18, if you go back to 17, and we talked earlier about the, about the fund balances. What, what didn't happen by, by getting down to 5%, is these balances, as I say, are there to help when major expenses are coming or facing the town so that we can either pay for it in cash or we have a good down payment. The cost of equipment, again, and you all see in your homes, whether you're buying a car or a truck or a refrigerator or a toaster, um, cost for things have gone up tremendously and the amount of time they last has reduced significantly. It used to be that you'd get a town truck and you'd have it for 20 years and a lot of the repairs could be done by either somebody that worked for the town or there'd be a local garage that did those sorts of things. Now, uh, that doesn't happen anymore. It's being smart and they're saying for budgeting that you shouldn't plan for more than seven years with these big pieces of town tr trucks and the plows and everything and those cost about $300,000 each. Uh, when, the, when it needs a repair, you sort of start at $1,000 and go up from there. We have several major expenses coming up in the next couple of years. We just this past year with the fire department put, I think an $8,000 repair into a 20 plus year old truck that that will hopefully get through for another three, two or three years, but that will be um, to the tune of $300,000 to replace that truck. This coming year, we have to have a new grader. It's been held together probably longer than anybody thought it would be done. And that's four hundred and fifty dollars to $500,000 for a single piece of equipment. Um, you look at the reserves funds and you see the money isn't there. But by, instead of coming with a really high tax increase, we come to you with 5%, a 5% increase. But the result of that is there isn't much money going into those reserves. So in the next couple of years, we're probably gonna be confronted with needing to do some significant bonding to buy pieces of equipment that we have to have. If, uh, if we do any further reductions, Really, the only places that these can come are gonna be in the road, so less paving would be done, less maintenance would be done. Uh, it, it's uh, just the cost of doing business. It's frustrating to the board. Uh, we wish there were magically there were more money, but we come to you with this budget as a, uh, as a 5%. Again, cost increase in healthcare. Not a lot that any of us can do about those sorts of things. So uh, we come to you after a lot of work. We, uh, we're happy to answer questions about it and uh, we appreciate your support. Thank you. Chair recognizes Deanna French. Deanna Judkins, I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Um, 
And this is Leslie Rawlings. We're your new listers. The News and Citizen made the comment that Hyde Park didn't have listers. Well, you do. You've got three really good listers, and we have a great assessor, Justin Mason. Leslie and I have already been doing some inspections. Krista is um, the assistant town clerk, assistant treasurer. She's doing a great job in the office finding tons of errors that were missed when we didn't have listers. So I feel it is, it's a good asset for the town of Hyde Park to have. And I've put this together, um, being a little concerned at what happened. So what I'm asking the taxpayers to do is to increase the budget by $2,550 so the listers can get paid a stipend of $1,600 per year. Basically, that averages out, we get about $20 an hour. By the time we do our inspections in end of March, 1st of April, I'm going to be over that already. Um, and Leslie, too. I don't know about Krista. So we met as listers to discuss how we were to get paid. We talked about hourly. We talked about the stipend. We felt the stipend was easier on us. It's hard to keep track of your time. I get a call from a taxpayer on a Saturday morning and I visit with them for 15 minutes. I don't write it down. My fault, I know, but I don't. So we discussed it, talked to the select, or it was mentioned to the select board, $1,600 seemed like a fair price. So after a sequence of events that changed the amount that the select board approved us to get paid, of $750, that's what they get paid, so they felt we should get the same. Um, it's a little disheartening at the way it happened. We were scheduled for a meeting January 9th, that it was canceled because of the weather. So we were asked to come to the January 23rd meeting, which we went to. And Roly Bovine asked us what we would like. We wanted to talk about it, and Susan, piped up and said it already had been decided at last week's meeting, the 16th, that we were not invited to attend. And we were gonna get 750, a stipend just like they got. Well, I don't really care what they get, that's their decision. It is what it is. But we had asked for 1600, and I would like to make a motion to increase the budget by the $2,550 and instruct the select board to give us this increase if approved by you, the voters, because it's, I understand that even if it gets approved, they do not have to give it to us. So I think it's important that we have listers. Leslie was so upset at the meeting, she was ready to quit. And it was just unfair the way the whole thing happened. I'm not sure how much discussion there was, but there was none with us on how we arrived at that number. And it's just important for us as locals. I've only been here 53 years, um, but I know people. And when we have grievances, the chances are I know them. We had a lady come in the other day. She was talking about houses that she was comparing her property to. One of them was one of the houses at Trim built. It was not a stick built. It was a Ken Harvey home. He built it as his home until he got his built, but nobody knew that. So it's important information that we have that information as locals. So I appreciate your support on this. Um, anybody have any questions? I'll try to answer them. I just want to say one thing, and, and I wasn't ready to quit because of the money. It was the, the mic. It's not on. Yeah, it is. Yeah, it is. Yeah, it is. It is on. Yeah. I just want to say that um, I wasn't ready to quit because of the money. It was the process, the way it was done, almost behind our backs, to be told what we were gonna do and not have the conversation that we were told we were going to have was disheartening. I mean, it was, it was, it hurt us, I guess. So it was upset. that's all I really have to say. Any questions? I have a question, I just want to come up and you know, I can't go. So. She's oh, coming. She's coming. <clears throat> Well, no, it's a long story. <laughs> so, <laughs> Before you speak, can you state your name? Oh, Beth Carrier. And I'm actually listed for last year as an assistant assessor because I stood up at town meeting because there weren't going to, the listers didn't exist and it was going to be given away 
to someone who was not associated with the town and we were not gonna have town voice in this process. So um, I said I would be an assistant assessor uh, because you have to take classes and stuff to be a lister and I hadn't taken them. And these women stepped up and became listers and the assessor stayed so they didn't need me at all. But here we are one year later with a three listers and we're back to having local control of this. And so I applaud these women for what they have done and hope that you will vote them in. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Any questions? Anyone else wish to speak on this? Yeah. I'm Jack back Anderson. Back behind him. <laughs> <clears throat> Uh, I know it. What's the world coming to? Good morning. My name is Jack Anderson, and I have uh, written down a couple of uh, points that I'd like to share with all of you. And uh, I think I have most of my information that came from the listers, and I had a nice chat with them. But I'd like to speak in favor of the listers' request to increase the funding from 7,500 to 1,600, which be an increase of that $2,550, for the following reasons. Number one, the select board did not consult the listers beforehand. Last year, you recall, the, Lester, the select board wanted to disenfranchise this body to uh, elect the listers. By eliminating, uh, so, so that takes away the Hyde Park voters' uh, responsibility to even vote for the listers at all. Well, right now we have three listers that are working. We need them. Last year, the Slook Board <laughs> told us no one was interested in being. Well, there are three that are, they're here. These people have stepped forward to be listers and need the full support, the full support of the town of Hyde Park, the community of Hyde Park, and the select board. We, the people of Hyde Park, are the boss. We're the boss of the, elect, the select board. We're the boss of the listers. We vote them, they are accountable to us. We need to have input. Competent listers will be maintained when they are treated respectfully and fully. And that's what I hope that this town meeting will do for the listers as they have suggested. Finally, it seems to me like in the past when the select board wanted to disenfranchise the people of Hyde Park of our voting responsibilities, I think by voting for the listers today for what they want is just another spanking the select board needs to understand <laughs> the importance of democracy in Hyde Park. Park. Vote for these folks. Thank you. Susan? Yeah. yeah. Uh, let's see. First of all, it was two years ago when we, because we didn't have any listers and we hadn't had any listers for a number of years, um, and with what the state requirements are, if you, if you don't have listers, you have to hire somebody to do the job because if that job isn't done, you don't have a grand list, so you can't mail out tax bills, which while not getting a tax bill may sound like a good idea, ultimately it's not a very good way to run a, to run a community. And, uh, and we didn't get any response that two years ago. So we came through last year and said, we still don't have any response. And at town meeting last year, um, these folks and several other people responded and said they would do it. And we said, that's terrific. 
in terms of how we got to the, the 750 and the money. Um, Justin, who's, who has been talked about and is in all the time and is going through the additional training to become an assessor um, besides the lister, and the listers work with Justin. Uh, they had been they had been doing hourly, and that was and again as they say you do 15 you do a little here and you do a little there and it's confusing and it's very difficult to figure out financially how you do it do you then pay them quarterly or what do you do? Um, they talked about wanting to do twenty dollars an hour, um, and we then went back and looked at the 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 bills that they had submitted. And it came down to it was going to be around seven fifty eight hundred dollars a year from the forms that had been committed. So that's what we based our 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 thoughts on. Plus, we did base it on. Of course, at the time they didn't know that we were struggling with the budget and trying to get down to five percent and having the increase that it is. So anybody looking for any additional money was not being very successful this year. And we said, well, if we, and we do appreciate the listers and the work they do and they're out in the field and the hours that they put in. And um, you can look at your planning commission and um, all the work that your fire department puts in and uh, all the work that a select board puts in and your DRB put in. And um, nobody else is being paid that amount of money. So we thought, and they had been very clear at the time that they weren't doing it for the money. Um, that they were doing it because they felt they had a responsibility. So with that information, we said, well, and what we're looking at, let's do the listers and looking at the previous bills that they had submitted. Then it came to seven fifty eight hundred dollars a year. So we said, let's just do the same thing as the select board. Um, they were there when we said that. We talked to Justin after it because they were there. I'm sorry if they felt they weren't, um, but wanted to come back and ask us to do more money if they felt they were slighted in that, we certainly didn't didn't mean to feel them. We we do we we appreciate all the volunteers that do the work in this town. Yeah, the end. Susan, so that may be true, part of, partly of what you're saying, but there was only one invoice in there, and that was for Leslie. I have not submitted my hours because I said to you it wasn't the pay, and it isn't the pay that I'm upset about. It was your approach and the way you dealt with it without even having any discussion. Rowley's asking us how we want to get paid. You didn't even let us talk about it. And I don't even, I'm not even sure the select board voted on it. And it, cause it's not in the minutes that they did. So it's up to you, the voters to decide um, how we get paid. Again, it's not the money. It was the approach that was used. I'm not going anywhere. I'm going to stay a lister in Hyde Park, and I'm going to be a pain in her ass forever. <laughs> so I'm here to stay. But you may not have any other listeners. Anna, did, <laughs> am I clear in saying that when you began to speak that you made a motion? I did make a motion. Right. So, so we're going to treat that as an amendment motion. Okay. And I need a second on that. And am I understanding that Jack seconded it? Is that true, Jack? Right. Okay. Yeah. So for the record, then we, we have it on that uh, Jack was a second on that. Any other discussion? I'm uh, Wiffy Brooks from Hyde Park, and I would just like to ask what it would cost if we had to hire someone from outside Hyde Park to do the Lister job, the two Lister jobs. You obviously looked into that when you made the decision to um, consider that. So could we have that information? John, John might remember. Yeah, I was going to ask. <clears throat> Before we came listers, they were using somebody called Terry Sabins, which I think a lot of you know. She was getting paid $60 an hour. And she's been kind enough to, to help us a little bit um, with Justin and training him and some of it she doesn't charge for like a phone call but she does get $60 an hour and that's all I'm going to say. She, and that, that money and again and she has trained Justin so Justin now does the work 
that she was doing. So that, that money hasn't vanished into thin air, it's being uh, reinvested in Justin. So that we, and, and again, one of the things you may have seen, um, small towns, the, the cost of assessing and a variety of things, there isn't enough in a small town to do it. Um, there are more and more requirements, training requirements, just as happens with the, with the fire department, coming down on the listers and assessors that you have to have more and more certification. So that what uh, what's Justin has helped create is an interlocal agreement so that Hyde Park and Johnson and several other communities are all chipping in, paying for Justin to do the work that, that we had been contracting out to somebody from, if you will, away to a big firm that does it. It's the kind of intertown local relationships that I think you're gonna see more and more developed. Um, you see, we're trying to develop with uh, dealing with the animal control officer and the dog counts. Um, it's gonna start happening with health officers that having people volunteer to do these jobs or do these jobs for, for 750 a year or even, even if we give the assessors more money for that amount of money, uh, people aren't willing to do those jobs for that amount of money. So it is, um, um, it's hard. Uh, Jen, do you know how much, no, she didn't have, you know, but it's basically we just rearranged how the money was being spent. Paul, there's somebody, I see it, I just, I see, I see a hand. Come on down to this mic, please. I, I can't hear you, <laughs> sorry. <clears throat> Thank you. Okay. Sue Moore from Hyde Park. I just wondered what training is involved to become an assessor. Cool. Assessor and lister are different, right? Yeah. Yeah. You're, I think you're asking for the lister or the assessors? Sorry, listers. Listers, right. Yeah. Right. I might not be the best one to answer that question, but so far we've actually had a um, very nicest day of the year, spent six and a half hours inside a windowless room. Um, learning how to be a lister. So, um, and I believe we have to do three more of those, two more of those. Um, there's constant training. It's not just going to people's houses and measuring. There's a lot more to this job. And education is a big part of it as well. Any other questions? Up in the back, you wanna come down, please? Good morning. My name is Steve Morse. Um, I know town meeting is a day when uh, lots of folks ask for extra stipends for uh, different uh, projects, uh, committees that they're on. Um, I've had an issue that I've tried to been dealing with the select board for most of this past year. Uh, I went to a number of the, the meetings. It has to do with our uh, uncontrollable speed and traffic issues in this town. So I went to try and see if we couldn't get some of these dirt roads reduced uh, from 50 miles an hour to something that's a little more safe, 35, Steve, 40. Steve, yep, yep. Excuse me, I was just wondering how germane this conversation was about speeding with Listers. the Listers issues. Well, if you give me a chance to finish, you might find out. So my point being is, <laughs> we're always asking for extra monies for uh, these committees. But yet, when I went to the town meetings for the postings of roads, they told us, told me, we didn't have the money to post the roads properly. You can rip 
I called the Sheriff's Department to see what they could do to slow down the traffic. I live on Centerville Road. And they come down through there 50, 60 miles an hour, not exaggerating. And I think Roland and I think Matt can back it up because they were up there doing the flood control and they expressed the same concern. I guess what I'm asking is, how can we justify increasing these special interest groups when we can't uh, enforce the speed limits in this town because probably 50% of the roads are not properly posted. We don't have the money to do it. And the Sheriff's Department can't patrol them because when they go to court, it gets thrown out because the speed limits are not properly ordinated with the town uh, politics, I guess. That's my point of bringing the two together. If we can't afford to keep the road safe and patrolled, why, how could we afford these special interest groups? And also, why are we paying the Sheriff's Department $480,000 a year <coughs> to patrol something that they can't control? Thank you. Thanks, Steve. Jack, you got a question? I guess what the listers are asking this group of people who are one of the bosses that uh, the select the, the listers are responsible to. We want to support them, perhaps over the objection of the select board, that we would increase the, the their budget by twenty five thousand and five hundred and fifty dollars, in order to be treating them fairly, respectfully, in order to maintain them to stay at listers for a long time. Thank you. Any other comments or questions? Yes? I'm not that smart. I hope it is good. Quick figure is correct. I think I just heard one that said 25,000. No, 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 quick. No, quick, quick figure. I, I came down because I was afraid you would tell me to come down. Okay. But I don't want to know is the I thought it was 2500 It's 2500 right. Yeah, I think Jack said 25000 yeah. Thank you. <clears throat> Any other comments or discussions? Call the question. Ah, I got a motion here to call the question. So the question is to increase the funding for the listers from 16 uh, from $750 for the year each to $1,600 each per year for a total sum of $2,550. All those in favor of that amendment signify by saying aye. Aye. Those opposed? The ayes clearly have it. That's how we'll call it. So you've uh, passed that amendment, and now we'll uh, turn back to the original motion with the amendment included. Any discussion further on that? There being none. Article 4 reads, shall we approve a general fund expenditure in the amount for the period July 1, 2024 to June 30, 2025. Point of order. Yo, what do you want? Don't we need to vote on Article 3? We just did. Yeah, we just did. Yeah, we just did. Yeah, we just did. Yeah, we just did. No, no. On 4. We're, we're doing this now. I'm reading it to you with the amendment included. You voted on the amendment. Now we're going to vote on the article. Which includes the amendment. It's hard to hear. All clear? No. 
Thank you. So in the amount of $3,336,900 plus $2,550, of which currently $2,805,100, which may be adjusted, shall be raised by property taxes and $531,800 by non-property tax revenue. Is that clear? All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? No. I don't believe that's a significant number of people for us to divide the house. So I'm going to call that that you've adopted Article 4 with the amendment. We'll move on to Article 5. Shall the voters approve the payment of property taxes to the town treasurer in four equal installments via Vermont Statutes 32, anointed 4792, as listed below, with delinquent taxes and assessments have been charged against them with an 8% commission after the fourth installment, the 32nd chapter of Vermont Statutes annotated 1674 and interest charges of 1% per month or fraction thereof for the first three months and thereafter and 1.5% per month of fraction thereof from the due date of such tax. Such interest shall be imposed on a fraction of a month as if it were an entire month. Um, 32 Vermont Statutes <coughs> Annotated, Chapter 5136. Payments are due in the hands of the treasurer at 4 p.m. on the below due dates. Only official United States Postal Service cancellation marks will be accepted if postmarked on or before the due date based on Chapter 32, Vermont Statutes Annotated, Chapter 4773. The first installment to be paid on or before Friday, August 30th, in the year 24. Second installment to be paid on or before Friday, November 15th, 24. And the third installment to be paid on or before Tuesday, February 18th, 25. And the fourth installment to be paid on or before Thursday, May 15th, 2025. Your pleasure. May have motion moved and seconded. Any discussion? Not hearing any, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? You've adopted Article 5. Article 6, to transact any other business that may legally come before this meeting. The legal voters and residents of the town are further warned and notified that the select board will hold a public informational meeting remotely to discuss Articles 2 through 5, including the proposed budget, on Tuesday, February 27th in the year 24, commencing at 6 o'clock in the afternoon, or 6 p.m. if you like. The public may attend the informational session through the Zoom platform or by telephone at the following link and phone number listed in your town report. Is there any other transaction or business that may legally come before this meeting? Paul, if, if I might, um, just because Steve brought up the whole thing about posting the roads and signage, um, as usual, that's not an easy thing to do. And uh, we're in the process of, and, and Steve was, has been uh, remarkably diligent and helpful in helping us get all this work done too. But you have to have, before you can legally post, um, you have to have the traffic studies done for the speed and doing all that sort of thing. And it's the, uh, the Regional Planning Commission does that work for us. So we, with uh, working with Steve and some other folks, um, you made, there was an issue around Battle Row. Um, we have the studies out, most of them are in. Once we have the traffic studies in, we put aside, I don't, I don't remember right offhand how much money it is a year to pay for the signs that, um, that, uh, that are cost. So we are, there is a two, three year process now, I think that we've got for updating, posting all the roads in Hyde Park with speeds that, uh, that are recommended and, and uh, seem safe. There is always the question of just because you post it, it doesn't mean people will travel that speed, but at least we can get them posted. So when the sheriff puts folks out there, 
and uh, and can stop them for speeding, then it's legal and they can and you can be taken to court because you are exceeding the legally posted speed limits. So just for you folks to know that there's a multi-year plan in process taking care of that. Also, while I'm thinking about it, getting the 911 signs up are slowly but surely all getting put up. Yes. You're welcome and thank you, Steve. Hello. I'm Beth Carrier again, and I'm here this time representing the Hyde Park, Hyde Park Community Circle. For those of you who don't know who we are, um, we're a volunteer group who puts on four events every year to promote community in Hyde Park. Um, we meet once a month on the first Monday of the month at 7 p.m. in the library, if anyone would like to come and volunteer with us. Um, our next event is Think Spring Puppets and Plants, which happens on March 16th from 10 to 12, 10 to noon in the Hyde Park Elementary School gym. There's a puppet show, there's plant plants. It's a very fun, free family event. Then our other events, we have the Ice Cream Social, which will be Monday, July 15th, Hyde Park Home Day, September 14th, and the wreath lighting ceremony, which this, this year will be on Sunday, December 8th at the library. And coming soon, we are going to be offering Hyde Park t-shirts with the logo of the town of Hyde Park. Um, they will be $10, which is cost, because the whole idea is that everyone will be able to have one and be happy to, and be proud to live in Hyde Park. Thanks. Thank you, Beth. Anything else come before us today? Motion to adjourn. Second. Seconded. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Thank you. Thank you all for coming. I appreciate your attendance here. We'll miss you.